they're, they're, none of them are married to each other, but they're all married and they have ch- kids. And they talk about the kind of stuff that we talk about, but they, but they're not constantly like, oh, well, this might not be listened. You know, like you can't listen to a Catholic podcast or show talk about these things without reminding people oh, by the way don't do this or that mm-hmm. you know you gotta it's that might not be illicit act or mm-hmm. whatever like they don't welcome back everyone craig and jonah here today so um I I wanted to start with this concept because I hear it every so often and it and it drives me crazy when I hear it among Catholic, especially Catholic people. When we start talking about these things and 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 specifically within the context of couples wanting to operate outside of the, the nice little rule book that Christopher West gives mm-hmm. us. And they're like, Well, just because you have a scratch at itch doesn't mean you scratch it. And I But don't you? Yeah, like, does anyone not scratch it? Like, do you listen to yourself? Yeah. Like, do we like intellectually? Like, no. I, that that itch is supposed to be there for a reason. It would be contrary to the end of my body if I scratched and satisfied. Like, no one does that, right? No, I don't think. So. Maybe Christopher West does though. So. Offers it up. I don't know. That that comment, like, it it, it just seems like such a self own because number one, this is more than just. An itch, but it's sort of like it's like an itch that affects your whole life. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't it drive you crazy? Like you have like a, a spot on the back on your on your middle of your back. That's all you can think about. Yeah, like you, you're up there rubbing against uh, a post. Yeah, my wife. Uh, that's her thing. Uh, it's especially true when she's pregnant, but she gets her back gets really itchy, and so I have to like just scratch it out. <laughs> to this to this except there's marks on there oh wow like that. and so when when she when she said man my back is really itchy i'm like i can start to get suspicious like are you pregnant <laughs> that's usually the... boy that's funny i wonder what causes that I I don't know. Pregnancy. although i heard uh someone was saying uh no it wasn't that what was it it was was it tingling in your ears could be a sign of like menopause I mean, I like oh, tingling, not like hearing a ringing. But. No, I think it's more of a, like it's 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 almost like a like an itch or whatever. Maybe a maybe an itchy back is like that. But is that which an old is, wives' tale? Yeah, I don't know. She have tingling in her ears. Is that what you're saying? She, she whatever they whatever her and the ladies were talking about, uh, she has, and so we are really hoping menopause is around <laughs> the corner. <laughs> Just like the good Catholic that you are. It's funny, like a lot of people, like you know, they, it's a dreaded process. But I don't know. And... <laughs> NFP is a dreaded process. Yeah, I can't think. I can't see how it could be worse. Be careful what you say. Yeah, was... I mean, there's lower libido. All kinds of stuff can happen. So, yeah, we'll see. Um... <laughs> yeah, we're actually gonna. You do... like your odds? What you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Let's let's mix it up. I've had my fill of the uh, NFP and abstaining for two and a half weeks out of the month and stuff like that's. I, I'm done doing that. Yeah, if I can help it. Um, so we'll see see about that. Um, I did it. We did some Twitter polls, and I wanted to share this. Let's see. We're this is gonna uh, test my. Um, technology here a little bit but let's see if we can get this to work okay and i gotta put it on screen here yeah okay so the and, and i try when i can i try to do the poll for men and women um and actually this one that is helpful i think yeah this one is this one is just for men only so i'm going to just talk about this this is actually a poll that's going on yet um, and so the question was Catholic men, when you have to skip communion on Sunday, what's the most common reason? First choice. And solo or porn. Solo and or porn. 
other sexual sin, non-sexual sin, I'm sinless. Show <laughs> so I wish that you would put, uh, you know, non-sexual sin. Please comment. Okay. Because I mean, like, I wonder what they're doing. You got to give people the choice, the opportunity to hit show results. Otherwise, they won't participate. So, yeah, I'm just saying for the non-sexual sins. Oh, like, I want to know why. Yeah. So the, now, of course, there's only 20 votes, and of those, 35 percent are say show results. But you know, 50 uh, percent of respondents in the vast, 50 uh, percent of everyone in the vast majority of those that responded said it's one of those two, which. Seems, yeah, so like 90%, it might actually be higher than 90%. Yeah, that seems to check out. That seems reasonable, I think. It's, it's a good poll. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be working for like Pew Research or something like that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, I'm putting together polls. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Every so often we end up at mass together. Yeah. <laughs> I always glance over at communion time. <laughs> Do you want to go to communion today? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because i don't really do that for you <laughs> just nosy yeah like, you're kind of nosy yeah just about that yeah because <laughs> i assume you're doing the same thing so no that's... i wasn't okay at least i haven't in a while i'm not gonna say i never have i think maybe when we first started the podcast i i think i did actually <laughs> but I, I don't know i i haven't lately yeah so but i notice it uh although when where we go to church there aren't too many people that that refrain for the mm -hmm. most part but it's usually guys and i think i know why <laughs> so uh so the other poll is uh this and i'm going to pull this up and this this i do have the men and the women what? wasn't there a female poll below it uh for why they don't go or... i have that on the i oh, have okay. that on the other tab here okay i think this is the one i want yeah. Okay. So we're going to share this. Should we do the women first or the men first? Uh, we'll do the, the whatever you want first. Okay. Okay. So I did a poll and this one I ran essentially side by side between men and women. So men only, when you go to confession, how frequently do you have to confess a sexual sin? So we got 45 votes, which is Pretty much, unless one of these goes viral, that's about what we get. So, first of all, 35% wanted to see results. Uh, and so then you have this group here that actually responded. And I did the I did the math. So I broke down the math. So those that actually gave an answer, 48% um, said that 75% of the time or more, they have to confess a sexual sin. So this nearly half. Yeah. yeah, nearly half of men say that 75% of the time or more they have to confess a sexual sin when they go to confession. Uh, a small portion, 13%, said they have to confess a sexual sin 50 to 75% of the time. And this one surprised me a little bit. I'm not sure I trust the honesty of these, these guys. So 38% said that they confess sexual sins less than half the time. Is that all? Hmm. Do we have a bunch of priests following us? Because, I mean, well, that could be too, but that's the only group of men that I could see that can live like that. Or are these guys that just don't confess that stuff? Or marital debt guys. Yeah, maybe. All the trads? Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm willing to bet for the 75% of the time or more guys, that's the reason they're going to confession. Mm -hmm. like it's right right know, it's rare to go to confession i think for most guys without that being the reason for going i i coveted my neighbor's tractor too hard <laughs> <laughs> need to go to confession yeah i mean i don't think that happens very often and i don't know like uh, yeah i don't know i because i think for most guys that's the typical lead off mm -hmm. sort of Yep. Yeah, we've talked about that a lot, but um, I thought that, and I, I was a little surprised by the women's results. So I'll, I'll admit that. So, all right, I'm gonna we're gonna do the women now. So we did the men. So now we're gonna share the women's results. I have to go back and 
Okay. So women, same question, women only, when you go to confession, how frequently do you have to confess a sexual sin? So again, the numbers get distorted because so many said show results. Mm -hmm. But um, so again, uh, how many women, 75% or more of the time have to confess a sexual sin? It was... 36% of women that, that answered the question one way or another. Do you think that they're counting birth control in that? So I, this is my personal feeling. I as tend, a woman expert. Yeah. As, a, <laughs> as, a, as an expert in all things, especially the, master of women's psychology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I suspect that the the people that are using birth control aren't worried enough to confess it. Uh, they're more likely to go maybe once or twice a year. I think. Yeah, and so and so for those people, do they confess it? Oh, I think I'd be so. curious. I think so. You think so? Yeah, that'd be an interesting poll. Leave a comment. Like, and I'm not here to judge. <laughs> oh yeah, we're not judging anybody. We're uh, just wondering. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's. Like birth control, for example, is not what I would say like born out of weakness and circumstance the way that solo and let's say porn and stuff is probably for people. Oh, it could be. I mean, if somebody's in difficult financial straits or, you know, for medical reasons. Yeah, but it's a, it's not a, it's typically something you're continuously doing. It's not like randomly. Like so you're, I would, not, you're not continuously going solo or you haven't, like, I mean, you can't, <laughs> people do get caught in that cycle. Yeah. But, but uh, you're saying you're making a conscious. Uh, let's choice. imagine. Yeah. So let's imagine a couple that's using NFP and in a moment of weakness, they say, we really want to have sex. And they, they use a condom once mm -hmm. the kind of a one-off thing. You had to go buy it though. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I got condoms laying around my house. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen a condom in decades. And we'd have to go to a different town to do it because everybody that's why you got Amazon. Thank goodness for Amazon. Gets your industrial size box. <laughs> Written all over the box. <laughs> Trojan. <laughs> and the mail lady. That'd be a fun, would think, oh yeah. That'd be a fun gag on oh. Huge, but you have nine kids. Yeah, yeah. So they might be wondering what in the hell is going on. <laughs> Finally, starting to use. Yeah, a little late for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways, I don't know, but I, I, I don't know. You know, I know what you mean as far as birth control being a, a conscious choice every time you use it. Yeah. I mean, but I think you would still confess it. I, I, I'm certain to some degree that most Catholics that use birth control know enough to confess it. The once a year, twice a year, they go to confession. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be. I'd be really interested to. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I because I just I don't have. I can't relate to personal experience what that's like. Like it just. It seems like a a thing that when people do it, they. I don't know that people that do it do it with a bunch of guilt. Like they're like, mm -hmm. I don't think they're worried about it. They just disregard or or have convinced themselves that you know conscience or whatever that I'm going to use it as opposed to. I kind of think that women especially carry guilt for more yeah. things than men do in a lot of ways, and I suspect that with birth control there is some guilt. Hmm. Like they they do it out of necessity, but there's still guilt. I, I would bet if I was a gambling man. I would bet that's the case. But but here's the difference. Like, hear me out. Okay. Like, every guy that steps into the confessional to confess because they went solo or fell on, you know, went on the internet, I think by and large leaves there with at the least the hope that it's not going to be repeated. Maybe not the belief, but they, they, they leave there with the desire not to do that again, whereas I think I think most people, men and women alike, that are on a kind of a active birth control program or whatever, are not leaving there like, yeah, I really don't like 
course they I they, can say they don't want to though. It's just the circumstances yeah. that require it. Okay. So I don't know. I... And, and 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 so if um if 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 in fact the women that are part of this this 36% that says 75% or more of the time, maybe it is. Uh how many maybe it is more like birth control and stuff like that, or maybe or other acts or whatever. Yeah, or is it masturbations, you know, and porn and stuff like I'm that? I'm gonna probably. guess that's a lower percentage, yeah. but yeah, I might be surprised. I don't know. Yeah. The uh nine percent, um, which was only like one vote said fifty to seventy five percent of the time, and um fifty just over fifty percent said uh, less than fifty percent of the time, which I think they're both like both either it's most of the time or not very frequently, like there's not much middle ground, you notice mm -hmm. that? Like, and I do wonder if they're sexual sins or because of their husband. Like you said, is it, yeah. is it a solo thing? Yeah. Or is it, yeah. um, you know, in some, you know, with, with their spouse? Yeah. Yeah. It's complicated. I mean, this, you know, there's just a lot of, there's just a lot of layers and moving parts. And like you said, if you're one spouse is, feel strongly one way and the other spouse doesn't and is pressuring you to do things you don't want i mean that just and then in reality should people be going to be forced to go to confession for that when there's 2352 that says that you've reduced culpability yeah in i would say in most circumstances there's reduced culpability for that yeah that's it yeah and that's up for everybody to decide but it's not like it's ever really talked about in, in a fashion where other than in the confessional, you might hear it where the priest will say, you know, you don't have to come here every time yeah. for this. Yeah. But it's certainly not preached. Uh, do you think it would be more common for a priest to sort of give that approach for a man or woman that's coming in talking about solo, or maybe they have like a porn addiction versus someone that's using contraception comes in and say i'm on the birth control pill do you think the priest is gonna be more like yeah you probably should stop doing that and go find an nfp trainer or something like that that i don't know <clears throat> i i can't even guess mm -hmm. i don't know well, i'm partly because i have a lack of experience with that as well but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know I, I don't know. That stuff is tough, and there's reasons for birth control. I think it's, I think it's very the, the stereotypical selfish person that only wants to have like one child. I think is less normal than it's made out to be. I think people have circumstances that push them towards. Uh, a certain number of children yeah that's actually a point i've been wanting to make for a few weeks because you know i i really get frustrated by the um especially the trads or those that really uh, malign people that are using birth control and this and that and yes i mean i i get it like the church says what it does do not take theological advice from us whatever <laughs> Um, but I, I just, I think for the most, you know, life is hard. Marriage is hard. Raising kids is hard. If you're trying to just trying to like, you know, pay off debt, just try to get ahead. I, I get it. Like it may not make it right, but it's, it's not. I think I think people that are doing that are trying to do the best they can, and maybe they maybe they need more trust and confidence in God. I don't know, but I just don't think, by and large, there are these selfish Instagram people that are just living the high life and they don't have time for kids. I think you yeah. know, most most people do end up having kids. Maybe they don't have as many, but they end up having kids, and they maybe they're like, you know what? I'd like to put two or three years between our children. Mm -hmm. You could very easily have a half a dozen kids in a marriage where you've been intermittently using birth control, mm -hmm. right? And so I I think that I think those that really rail on birth control people, you know, I think do a disservice because I don't think they are 
really understanding how the struggle that people go through and how I have found that most of the people that are like that are not people that are using NFP themselves. They're more the <laughs> whatever is many God gives us marital debt people. Mm-hmm. Um, but NFP is really hard as we talk about yeah. on, this, on this show. And for a number of reasons, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult for a lot of reasons. Um, and so I get it. Like I get why, you know, not everyone can have nine kids or four kids or five, whatever they, or, or maybe don't believe that they can. Um, and I just, I just, it's not my, I sympathize with their situation and I'm just not here to the like, Oh man, look how evil and selfish and whatever you are. Just like, yep. I did people are people are hurting and people are doing their best for the most part and um you know the one thing that there, there's a couple of non-catholic sort of sex and intimacy shows that i listen to and the one is a i think it's two women and a guy they're all married they're, none of them are married to each other but they're all married and they have ch- kids and they talk about the kind of stuff that we talk about, but they, but they're not constantly like, Oh, this might not be listened. You know, like you can't listen to a Catholic podcast or show talk about these things without reminding people, by the way, don't do this or that, Mm -hmm. you know, you gotta, it's that might not be illicit act or Mm -hmm. whatever. Like they don't worry about any of that. It's more like what is good for your marriage. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a lot of them don't use birth control. They're using other things, but they're just not constantly like fraught with this moral fear that I think tends to plague us Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're a little different, but, you know, I would say more of the, you know, the conventional Christopher West, those folks that really just. It's scrupulosity to a certain degree. Certainly legalism. I mean, mm-hmm. you just. You just can't. Uh, you you just can't go through a show. With, I mean, they either stay way away from gray areas, or they're like, "Oh, man, just remember, don't cross this line, don't cross that line." I'm just like, "Oh." So is it better for a couple to get divorced because they're having issues because of lack of intimacy, yeah. or is it better for them to stay together and right. use birth control or other acts? Right. Right. I mean, I know my answer <laughs> because I think being together in one marriage is yeah, is the best way to do it. Yeah, and and unless these people are afraid that those couples are just having it too easy, they all they, <laughs> their marriage is not a cakewalk either, right? Yeah. You know? So I just think I I wish that people would tone down the dial, you know, the the tone when it comes to talking about birth control and stuff like that yes i mean we should try to follow the church's teaching and i think there is wisdom behind the church's teachings but i think i think we could just show more empathy and Mm -hmm. sympathy with people and maybe maybe our view would be more attractive to them well and i think like we've said before it's easy to see that birth control could be wrong or i'm fine with that not being permissible but it's the other act stuff that yeah absolutely it, it, it just seems like there's something missing with mm-hmm. that teaching. Absolutely. So we're going to keep talking about that yeah. over and over again. Until <laughs> someone tells us to stop, tells yeah. us to stop. So, all right. Well, speaking of kids, I have to get home so I can get my kids to school. So all right. appreciate you sharing that with me. So thank you, Jonah. Thank you, you everyone for listening. And until next time, everyone. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.